Can we ferment our way to better health? If you're an astute follower of my content, you've heard me mention the concept of precision fermentation and or notable startups that are commercializing such material for functional CPG brands in numerous pieces of content over the last handful of years. That being said, I've somehow overlooked the fact that I haven't given precision fermentation the respect it deserves with its own dedicated content. So consider this part one of many because precision fermentation is only getting started and I'm not giving up content creation for a long time. Sorry guys, you're stuck with me. But since this is unofficially part one, how about we start at what the heck precision fermentation is and how it differs from what has been used in food production for thousands of years. Traditional fermentation uses intact live microorganisms to modulate and process plant-derived ingredients. It results in products with unique flavor, nutritional profiles, and modified texture. There are advanced versions of traditional fermentation that help functionality of plant-based proteins, but I won't be mentioning them again in this particular piece of content. And that's because of really like the complexity of this subject matter. I want to stay focused on precision fermentation, which is a significantly newer technology that has been used within the food industry for, let's say about the last two decades. Precision fermentation has now emerged as a leading edge of food and beverage ingredient innovation, with the list of mega companies investing in the process growing extensively of late. Precision fermentation uses microbial hosts as cell factories for producing specific functional ingredients. Not only is precision fermentation being explored as a launch pad for cultivating new protein sources, but it's also highly versatile in its capacity to be tailored towards producing other key food and beverage ingredients for texturizing, flavoring, and stabilizing. Unlocking the potential of precision fermentation within the CPG space has been made possible with the use of artificial intelligence to rapidly identify ingredients that may offer improved functionality or added health attributes. AI is the heartbeat of the precision fermentation movement. These deep learning platforms can design ingredients from billions of edible sequences and apply precision fermentation parameters for producing them. AI will undoubtedly revolutionize many aspects of the functional CPG space, but maybe I will let ChatGPT create a future piece of content on that another day. Ha! Got he! Ha! Got he! Ha! But while some of the broader CPG industry innovations would be described as remarkable and will get their own mentions likely in future content, I want to again narrow this content's focus towards functional CPG applications involving nature identical animal proteins. Now, if we're talking precision fermentation dairy proteins, there are several startups and or large corporate partnerships that already have or are very close to having products commercialized but I wanna dive deeper into one. Perfect Day is the precision fermentation startup behind the animal-free whey protein material called ProFirm. For anyone not involved on the supply side of the functional CPG industry, ProFirm or even Perfect Day probably doesn't ring a bell, but it recently partnered with the largest global online sports nutrition brand. In August of 2022, my protein launched Way Forward, a sustainable, animal-free, lactose-free, and vegan-friendly performance whey protein powder. Why would one of the largest sellers of functional CPG products that contain dairy proteins lean into precision fermentation? There's a few different like short and long-term value propositions that differentiate it from the mainstay commodity ingredient that I want to mention. But let's start at the functionality and quality considerations. The nature identical whey protein from Perfect Day is superior in taste and texture to plant-based protein options, is a more controlled protein source, and has no cholesterol or lactose like traditional dairy. 
But what you'll hear a lot from precision fermentation when it's being pitched by suppliers or brands utilizing material is around greater sustainability. Are cattle and other animals the main issue causing climate change? My logic-based brain doesn't compute that reality, but I do know that precision fermentation requires large investments in building materials and fossil fuel utilities to maintain the particular environmental settings necessary for the microorganisms to thrive. I also believe that maybe before the decade is over, commercial scale precision fermentation facilities will be like data centers, which eventually became ubiquitous. And like data centers, commercial scale precision fermentation manufacturing facilities could one day be relied upon to make a vast array of vital products. So as precision fermentation ramps up into thousands of fermentation tanks and hundreds of facilities, the sustainability check is one that I'm not sure they can cash just yet. But long term, I do believe it will be a valid value proposition and it will be much less impactful on the planet while providing a very much needed supplement to global food security. And this is sort of touching on the very important long term value proposition of precision fermentation for functional CPG brands like MyProtein, and that's with supply chain stability. While milk proteins have come down in price significantly in 2023, it tripled at one point just a few years ago due to the global kind of supply demand being off balance. With scale and the before mentioned superior controllability element of the production, nature identical animal proteins created by precision fermentation would essentially become much cheaper than traditional dairy or egg protein costs, thus helping to hedge future commodity concerns. Since I kind of just mentioned egg protein, and we all know the egg crisis that we just went through, I also kind of want to quickly talk about the Every Company, which developed the first animal-free egg white. The Every Protein material can be used instead of traditional eggs for the use in baking and or nutrition applications. While the Every Company hasn't landed that star functional CPG brand yet, like Perfect Day and My Protein, I did enjoy the partnership creativity with the better for you alcoholic beverage innovator Pulp Culture in creating the world's first protein boosted hard juice. Again, many more super innovative examples I could highlight, and I'm sure I will over time, but I want to kind of keep this initial content concise by shifting into the challenges and potential slow ups around the adoption of precision fermentation. Firstly, most precision fermentation startups are still at a relatively early stage, and as you'd expect, still losing large amounts of money. Precision fermentation infrastructure with the capacity to operate at scale is also limited, highlighting the urgent need for investment in larger scale fermentation and downstream processing facilities. In the two startup examples that I just mentioned, they've gotten around that production challenge through partnerships. I believe Perfect Day has partnered with ADM and the Every Company has partnered with AB InBev. Regardless, precision fermentation startups are heavily funded by tech billionaires and venture capitalists. And even if these investors throwing billions of dollars around care about animal rights or climate change, they are most likely betting on the potentially enormous upside that comes with market domination of whole commodity groups and categories. That's why I think you see regulatory agencies around the world start pushing back to get answers around ownership, governance, and social equity considerations. And depending on how open or closed this technology eventually becomes, it will impact future funding opportunities. But in the present day, Startup funding across all sectors is quite tight, which causes its own set of adoption challenges within the functional CPG space. That's because Perfect Day and other precision fermentation startups had been subsidizing the deals to help with price parity on traditional animal protein ingredients. So without tons of funding prospects at good structures available, that aggressiveness must chill out. And with less finished good products commercialized, it brings up questions around how the consumer thinks about precision fermentation right now. As mentioned earlier, precision fermentation isn't necessarily super new. And despite it having a frame of reference to ancient production techniques, it is a process that may not be easily understood 
by many consumers. This knowledge gap will allow critics to position the technology as unnatural or potentially unsafe. So precision fermentation startups will need to establish appropriate product labeling that creates trust through transparency. And take these consumer results with a grain of salt because it was conducted in partnership with Cargill and Perfect Day, but consumer perceptions around precision fermentation are quite strong, with 40% of US adults saying they are immediately ready to try products made with this food technology. That adoption percentage improves in younger generations, especially as Gen Z becomes more engaged in food technology that can be better for the environment. But one aspect of the survey that I found especially fascinating was around product categories that consumers were most interested in purchasing that were made with precision fermentation. 88% said protein powders, just a few points less said protein bars, and then a few points below that were energy drinks and sports drinks. That's why I stayed focused on functional CPG in this first piece of devoted precision fermentation content. It's both where the most commercialization is happening and consumer interest is right now. But to close this up quickly, precision fermentation is obviously full of potential within the functional CPG industry. It can provide similar taste, texture, flavor, and nutrition, all while working towards those larger sustainability value propositions. So it's bound to gain traction, even with challenges and questions likely ahead. But I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video. If you did, consider hitting the like button to support me. Also help me get to my new short-term goal of 3,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to see you join me on this journey, but we need to fix the fact that basically 80% of you that are watching this YouTube video right now are not subscribed to my channel, and that makes me extremely sad. But I do wanna thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.